So when we first get our brand new box of astronomy gear, we can get super crazy. We think we know what we're doing because we've watched so many videos, looked at instructions. We start ripping things apart. And then before we know it, things are not kind of the way they need to be. So what I want to talk about today is how to attach this two inch filter wheel to my ASI 2600 MC Pro and what I was doing wrong. I'm Chad. This is the Easy Aster Images channel. We are going to collect some photons today. Welcome back to the channel, everybody. So I have recently was online looking at possibly adding an off access guider to my system. And I had always looked at this uh, system here when it came to the ZWO back focused, you know, this is a nice page that they've had that they've worked on continually as they brought out items and back focus that most of their cameras and you know, most of your systems need. So currently I'm running with this right here, which is the 2600 two inch filter wheel, a 54 to 48 adapter, um, a 48 to 42 adapter if needed an extension. And then depending upon what I need on my telescope end, which I don't need anything because the red cat uses 48 millimeters. Now what I'd always just kind of looked at and assumed here was that, well, this is a female hole and this was a female hole here, but I did have this extra adapter here that came with, uh, the filter wheel, by the way, uh, get a spanner wrench or you'll end up with markings on yours like that. But I was recently looking at, uh, the off axis guider large. And I noticed that in the instructions, there was all kinds of different things. And then I was watching my, my buddy Glenn uh, Astro Blokes video on him actually installing the OAGL to this configuration. And it turns out that I missed quite a few things. So first of all, the connection to the filter wheel. Second of all, um, there's also these darkening rings here that go in between the system because basically ZWO has, they're trying to eliminate uh, the actual uh, extra spacing and spacers that are needed. So ba what you're doing here now is you're bolting uh, things together, which is super duper much appreciated. That is for sure. Okay, so sure enough, these are just the filter holders. The darkening rings actually are a brand new product that ZWO is shipping with all of the new shipped electronic focusers that will come out there. And they kind of look like this right here, 10 bucks from ZWO or $30 to ship. So I will wait till a Gina Astro gets them. But the whole reason that we need them is a lot of people are reporting light leak after installing the filter wheel the proper way. And the proper way is basically you can see you've got holes right here in the top of the tilt plate adapter. And then you've got the matching holes right here on the actual filter wheel. So they're doing this whole bolt on thing. And obviously people are getting a lot of le light leakage through here or on the other side where it connects to the off axis guider. So the temporary solution that a lot of people seem to be doing is just putting, you know, some kind of black tape or something along the lines there to keep any stray light out. I don't have a lot of stray light out in my area where I shoot, but you know, you could pick up anything even like red from the camera, um, so on and so forth. So it looks like on this one, we will be bolting to this outer hole pattern here. And in order to get to the outer hole pattern, um, it pretty much looks like you're going to have to take the entire uh, wheel out here and get to that way. So how we do that is, I believe, I'll have to take a look at this here real quick on how to get rid of the carousel. So there's a piece of black tape that goes over right here. And what you'll want to do, of course, they must have identified that as a possible area for light leak is after we take off this flathead screw, we can pull this out. But then when we get everything back together, we'll want to put a piece of black tape over that as well. All right. So when you pull this off, these the whole thing rides on a couple bearings in there and the roller bearing inside there. And then there is also 
I pulled it out with mine, um, a washer that goes in between there too. So you want to be super careful with all that and that you do not lose anything and that everything is uh, still in the proper order. Now we've got some bolts that did come with the filter wheel that are basically just going to go right through here. They're countersunk screws and they're going to connect right up to the camera. And what we'll do is just go ahead and stick one of those in and make sure our orientation that we want is correct. So I want my filter wheel to stand up this way. So that is the way that we are going to do it. And then all we got to do, correction, that goes to the enter holes. So you definitely want to make sure that everything is seated properly and before you tweak everything down all the way so maybe get like all four screws in make sure you're happy and then uh, try to get them in place properly uh, be careful not to drop anything on your sensor and everything else because that would be a bad day and I am happy with my orientation, so that's the way everything will be right there. That way the EA, the filter wheel will be pointing up for me, and that's the way I want it to be. So now what I'm gonna do is just go ahead and secure these down, so in a cross pattern. And then uh, whenever these darkening rings come into stock here in the United States, we can pick a set of those up, and we'll just have to remember that. So that is a good thing to know. And it's a good time to give your filters a good cleaning as well. And then we will just lay this right back down on the matching hole and line everything up appropriately so it slides down just like that. And then here is our screw that will go back in to retain all of this. And now we can just go ahead and assemble everything exactly the way it was by putting in all of the little screws that hold the filter wheel in place. And then we will give this thing, we'll hook it up and give this thing a go to make sure that uh, we got everything put back together correctly inside there. Um, actually, I forgot to put black tape on that in the middle. So. Let me take care of this and get this back together. Okay, everything's mounted up and hooked up and I did a test with uh, everything open at first. Because I took it back apart just because I wanted to make sure and I did tighten that flathead screw up too tight. So make sure that like, you know, you get it right down to the roller bearing snug and then just kind of back it off a little bit. And uh, then if you look down here in the corner, we're on the filter wheel tab of Nina. And if you look uh, down here in the bottom, you'll see the text when I hit change that it is switching filter. If you have it too tight, it's literally just going to sit there and say switching filter forever. And you don't want that happening because that could be a good opportunity to hurt your system. And that is something that we do not want to do. So that's it. We've got the light leak fixed. We know there's a better solution coming. I've got everything mounted appropriately the way it should have been in the first place. It would have definitely affected my back focus had not the Red Cat have the Petzl design, which allowed me to have leeway with back focus. That's one thing I do love about pretty much all the William Optics products. If they're not a Petzl design, then the reducers have, uh, you know, they're variable and with markings. So you can kind of make up plus or minus the differences. Now, as far as the OAGL goes, Still thinking about that. Uh, my 8-inch RC, I never really had a problem guiding with it before, um, even with an on-axis. The 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 on-axis, the off-axis guider and stuff like that just kind of creates a little bit of confusion. Extra stuff just kind of sticking out everywhere that you got to watch out for with these uh, systems. And I'm very looking very, very hard at a Falcon rotator and how to fit that into the whole scheme. And it's going to stick up 
like a, it's the size of a plate, basically, like the, the seven position two inch EFW is. So I'm really thinking the, long and hard about that. But boy, would it just make things totally automated and totally amazing. So I hope this helps you guys out and uh, we'll see you guys later. Peace.